the first item is Lorax on a sustainable development. Would you like to go ahead, please? Sure, I'm Bob Bobstol, the Triantic, and uh, the owner, Mike, Mike Brigham. We've got two, two items on the agenda tonight, the conditional use and the waiver request. Is there a preference on which one we talk about first? Conditional so, use is first, so okay. that, that's you. All right. <laughs> so, as you guys know, um, and my primary residence is the existing home at 658 Silver Street. Um, for a while there, I explored the possibility of selling it and was told pretty repeatedly that it's just too big. In today's days, the McMansions are kind of out, which was for my own best interest because I love it. I love my neighbors. I love the property. I love the house. <coughs> but I agree that it's too big. It's also unique in that there's a main house and then there's an addition. I think I showed a picture of it which has a kitchen and two rooms above it. It has its own entrance, it has its own exit. It would be a, a very simple situation to seal it off um, from the main house, even with a door if I wanted to access it for some reason later. So I feel like of, of any house, this one really lends itself to the possibility of having um, an auxiliary apartment. It would certainly make the house even more perfect to, to me. I'm, I'm just three people that are living in my life and my daughter and myself. Um, so basically, I kind of laid out my case. I typed up a quick little explanation as to what I was thinking and um, was hoping that if I could get the permission that I could work with Tom to, to make sure it fits the, exactly what it needs to and that I have um, get a permit to put. Really, the only change to this house that would be required is there's a, 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 an extra room on the other side of the house so that I would convert into a kitchen. So uh, other than that, the bathrooms and the entrances and the exits and the closets and everything really line up very well. Um, your, we have just one copy of your application drawing here, it looks like. Um, I had submitted one with measurements, I see. Yes, so so we just have that one, so people are not looking at what oh, okay. you're talking about. So I didn't realize um, that. The, at the top of the page, it says either second level or first level, so there is another page with the other level. Yes. I think there was a photograph, too. I don't know. I should have. They were attachments to the email. Oh, okay. um, yeah, we did. Uh, I, didn't think I, I assume they were the same things there. Yeah, I mean, basically, the photo just really ex it, it points out the fact that this house has an entrance and an exit on one side, and then the main, the actual front of this house faces the waterfall, faces Cumberland Farms. I found it in the history of Rollinsford, and back then there weren't trees in between it, and it actually looked down over the, the, the you know, the waterfall in front of Cumberland Farms. So... Currently, the way it's set up, that, that is the front entrance. And, and then there's a back entrance to the main house that goes onto the deck. Um, it literally has four points of egress. And um, it's divided into two sections. Like, like I say, what I was hoping is to get the permission and then to iron out <coughs> the details with Tom. Oh, I'm going to ask you for comments first. Well, um, I haven't seen the proposal, so I'm a little aware. Oh, well, we're still new at process, clearly. Here it is. Apologize for All right, let me see. So Actually, if you can, and they've passed the, the floor plan ones down, too, if you don't. If yeah, I, I would want for Tom to comment that's on what I'm trying to get verifying the, the floor plan and the square plan. Right, there's two of them. So this just kind of that's the second floor. The other one is this is this is the, the way this house lays out. It's really in two sections. There's two staircases. Um, I'm not real concerned about that. More about the accessory dwelling units as it's spelled out in the zoning ordinance. Did you like? 
points by any chance? No. Um, what I did was I called here and found out that the day I was calling to submit these was the actual deadline. And uh, so I, I, Caroline gave me an application. And in that application, I did answer um, yeah. Yeah. what I perceived as, as right. the concerns or questions. I didn't see a list of questions. Well, it's not really questions, it's a list of conditions. Um, I did read them, yeah. Okay, so go over them. Sure, what, what page are we on, please? On page 48 of the zoning ordinance. And, and keep uh, in mind that um, we changed some of these things in the March. Oh. <laughs> I'm just hitting you left and right, aren't I? Um, <laughs> this board would recall, though, that um, we made some adjustments to the accessory dwelling unit provision at the March town meeting, and so I'm going to get the town report and vision. something with the end, I remember that. Um, remember but that. we did change it um, from 500 feet to um, yeah, 750, and that was the most major change. The, the rest of it was just language yeah. cleaning yeah. up. Okay, so this, this really shouldn't take much time. I mean, you only, it's only one accessory dwelling. Correct. Um, only allowed on lots containing single family homes. Property one must occupy one of the two units. Yep. Only one bedroom permitted in the accessory dwelling. Uh, that I can't change. Or got eliminated, right? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I figured you made your okay. changes to adhere to that. Well, so if we're in conflict with state law, we would have to adhere with state law. But I don't know. You know, when we went through this revision process around accessory dwelling units, the effort was in being consistent around state law. But offhand, so I would have thought that we would address that, but. I think you can't limit it to one anymore, but that's, I'll agree to whatever you come in. So, so perhaps we should. I have the changes that we made to this. Was there anything regarding bedrooms? No, so unless if the paragraphs A, B, or C reference bedrooms. A, B, or C do not um, reference bedrooms. No. Um, adding paragraph 10 referencing attachment to permanent structure. Right. That was it. And then 500 square feet. All right, so we didn't change anything about bedrooms. So, the, um, I mean, I'll accept it for what it is, and then if it changes at some point. Well, I would say if we can prove that state law says we have to allow for two bedrooms, then you know there's a case for that, and okay. we would have to allow that. Can add that on my list. Then. Look in, you know, don't change it. Well, okay. well, no. I mean, we can't have regulations that are in conflict with state law. So, you know, if, if that is the case, then we can address that. Um, I would say not in time for tonight because we need to make sure that we're we can, all right. we're working on language way. and where it goes appropriately. Right. But so we'll, we'll follow up on that, and then not more than two people occupying is that the same? Probably the same deal. We can't limit that. Do we know? I look at the state record. You have plenty of off street parking. It's not going to be condominium ownership. Subject is inadequate for both units. Successor dwelling must be attached to the primary dwelling. Um, it has convenient direct access to the primary dwelling. Parents shall remain out of single family. Size will be 750. Primary dwelling and accessory share common utilities, including well septic, heating, electrical. Sure, the bathrooms are individually needed. Um, <coughs> excuse me, 
not an accessory dwelling, something such that it would be readily adaptable to convert into part of the primary dwelling. Would yeah. So, um, how old is the septic system, and you know, how, what is it rated for? So it's a four-bedroom septic and a four-bedroom house. I'm not going to add um, a bedroom. I'm not adding any square footage to the house. Well, you're not adding square footage, but are you making a den into a bedroom in this conversion or something like that? Um, what is your total number of bedroom counts after the conversion? I, mean, I guess it would be five. And I'm not positive what the septic is, if it's a four or a five bedroom septic. I think we should have that verified. And um, would you consider, or, or would you convert one of the bedrooms in the main house to a den? I mean, that's a possibility too, If I because I don't need even the three. Um, that's why I was, before I actually hired an engineer and started designing a kitchen and all that kind of stuff, I wanted to first make sure I, I could get it with the conditions that I have to resolve, um, and then fine tune it. But that would be a possibility. If I don't have a five bedroom septic or it's not easy enough to expand it, then it, one of the other ones that's technically not going to be used anyway would just become a, I could do that, I could make it a den. That would work. Yeah, it would work. Yeah. So I know you. We're only using you're, you're two bedrooms. Skeptical, but no, I'm not skeptical. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering about process and where do we go from here. Um, I think first what we do is find out from the applicant how big the system is. If yes. it is four or five, and then he can when he issues the uh, when he submits the building permit application for the actual conversion and renovation, then we can confirm that the number of bedrooms in the building complies with. I agree. Can we consider the application complete without the septic plan? And just make is that, that one of the... Well, it's... I guess that's up, up to the board, but I mean, if, if... I have to meet these conditions, even if you approve it. Yes. Just like if it was new construction, even if you approve that I can do it, I still need to meet all the conditions in order to get an, a, a permit and then an occupancy certificate. Well, right, but I think I would want to... It would be approved subject to it meeting. You know what? So what's it... What, I, I can't imagine it's rated for three bedrooms, for example, but what if the subject is really not even... I would have to bring it up. Then he... Right. He won't give me... Okay, All right, right, so we're really just deciding whether the idea is okay. I apologize for monopolizing the floor. The concept. Yes. If I were building new, I would still need to go through him completely, even though you've approved the house being there. He still has to make sure everything's all good. I'm just thinking out loud, too. Yeah. <laughs> I just I to agree a couple things with the statute. The statute says. 674 colon 72 entitled accessory dwelling units. Uh, this is Roman 5. The applicant for a permit to construct an, an accessory dwelling unit shall be made adequate, pro shall make adequate provisions for water supply and sewage disposal for the accessory dwelling unit in accordance with, I want to say, 485 hyphen capital A colon 38. A separate system shall not be required for the principal and accessory dwelling units. Order to comply with this paragraph, and prior to constructing an accessory dwelling unit, an applicant application for approval for a sewage disposal system shall be submitted in accordance with RSA 485. I can capitalize as applicable. The approved sewage disposal system shall be installed if the existing system has not received construction approval and approved approval to operate under current rules or predecessor rules, or the system fails or otherwise needs to be repaired or replaced. Uh, so to me, that's saying that we don't have to know that in order to grant this, but prior to him building, he's got to, to, to do this. Um, it also says, just going on some other things, uh, that under Roman 9, under this uh, section, a municipality may not limit an accessory dwelling unit to only one bedroom. Um, something that I... Uh, so, um, I guess 
that's what I have to add on that for right. This is Roman 4. Any municipal regulation applicable to single family dwelling shall also apply to the combination of principal dwelling unit and accessory dwelling unit, including but not limited to lot coverage standards and standards for maximum occupancy per bedroom. The municipality may require adequate parking to accommodate an accessory dwelling unit. Okay. So, those are the end of my comments. Anybody else want to comment or go over here? Colin? Well, I, I, I took it the same way in that uh, <clears throat> it still has to meet all the obligations and, and statutes. So, as far as presenting the idea tonight and accepting it, it's complete. Um, I understand his point of wanting to make sure that it, it is something that investing in other engineering development in that same way. Yeah, it seems like the only real thing to resolve is that it's a septic. And if it isn't large enough, then you have to make it large enough. So on that, I would move that we accept the application as complete. I'll second that. And so just as before we vote, so are we are we making a final decision on this tonight? Um, we could. I'm just voting for completeness. Okay. But All we right. Could. Uh, no, I'm not. I guess I, I wouldn't mind pausing a little bit. I'm sure you don't want to pause this because I I'm trying to think if there's any uh, in, in the practical matter. I don't put the problem with it being held as completed. So whether it's any incompat incompatibility somehow with what we you know the long process we went through to the whole development to begin with, I, I suppose not, but because it would be subject to the same uh, easement restrictions and everything else. And because they have to allow it anywhere we allow single family dwellings anyway. And in it terms doesn't of the, meet any obligation in this context. It doesn't meet any of the stipulations. It's going to come back up as part of the process. Right, right. We have that protection there, but it still has to, just because we say it's complete and or moving forward, he's still obligated to satisfy And in terms of the water issue, that's not, um, we, get, we had a study from the fire department as it was laid out. Yeah, that's supply, yeah. the water supply, yes. So it is one more unit. It is one more unit. But it was adequate. So normally one more unit would not sure. raise alarms for pressure issues. Okay. okay. But okay. I appreciate that exercise in, in, in the context of the development. And number 16 does say an accessory, <coughs> excuse me, accessory dwelling unit occupancy permit will have to be obtained and shall be revoked if all of these conditions are not maintained. So there is an avenue. I mean, it's, I don't see any reason the board. If the rest to grant it, and then we'll just follow up. I think in fairness to the applicant, that's probably a, be a better way to go as opposed to requiring him to spend funds investigating the septic service only to find out So I understand the cart before the horse, but like you know, Tom said, we fill that the protection knowing that if it doesn't meet everything as it's written, you know, that's it, we, it, it needs to be made to meet those yes. conditions right. before it won't fly. Right, and I think there you have conditions of approval. Yes. Because I know you're concerned about right. Sure. I, and I, and I, I, I share those concerns, but I mean if it, so to say there is an out, the out being that he still has to meet it. So your suggestion is to, again, find a complete, yes? Just, just complete, yeah. And then we can discuss whether that's. There's a motion on the floor. Yes, okay, Chair. all right. Um, <laughs> all in favor say, uh, finding the uh, application complete, say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. All right. So, next step. Public hearing. Public hearing, right now. Um, forgive me, it's been a very, very long day. Uh, are there any members of the public like to comment upon this uh, application for condition conditional use? Seeing none, I'm going to call on the public to close. Are you going to suspend it? Ah, I'm going to suspend it instead. All right. <laughs> We're all still learning. All right. And then if you want to present the next issue.
Yes. Well, they are separate issues. Well, okay. yeah. they're separate issues. Right? Okay. So, we want to vote on accepting the application. So, okay. Did we do that? I'm sorry. No, it was, it was, it was complete. complete. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And then you had a public hearing for the conditional use permit. Yes, yes. we're only on conditional use. Right. But we should, I think, right, close the public hearing and then. Well, not to the two topics. Okay. Separate topics. Hearing and we're going to start on the second issue. Well, no, we're not starting. No, we're, no, not starting we're, we're going to vote on the first issue. <laughs> you don't mind. The first issue. <laughs> you don't no, mind. no, no. I thought I heard okay. something differently, but I'm not um, hearing All right, so I would move that we accept the conditional use, that we approve the conditional use permit contingent upon the proof of the septic system um, being adequate for the proposed total number of bedrooms. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. Now we can do another next All right. I'm ready. Uh, yeah. 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 So this is, this is the second item that, that we have tonight. And this is relative to um, lots three and four of the, of the, of the three subdivisions. And this is this is a, a great situation where, as, as uh, what we'd like to do is put in a, a common drive, and normally that's something that we, we like to do as part of the, just the open space subdivision to get kind of in concert with, with the open space and, and less less impervious and more efficient development. But in in, gen in general, people don't like common drives, so we we, we shy away from them. But in, in this case, Mike has an opportunity where, where he's got two, two uh, prospective buyers of, of three and four that, that desire common drive. Um, so it, it, fits right, it fits right into uh, how we would like to explain it from the beginning with, with, with the common infrastructure. So we have requested the, the three, one of them is here. <laughs> um, we, we have uh, requested a waiver from, from uh, section 9.2H5 that says all driveways shall conform to the side and rear setbacks contained in the current plan and regulation. So we're, we're asking to allow the common drive go down down the common lot line between lot three and four and then have each, each owner split off and, and access their, their own residence from that. So we're proposing a 30 foot wide easement and the common drive would be constructed in that, and it goes back, uh, it goes back about 150 feet back off the, the cul-de-sac at Charlotte Lane, and uh, we, we think it's we think it's a good idea. Tom, comments, please. I think it's a good idea, Jim. Okay. 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 So um, <laughs> I just want to bring up as a point of information that the shared driveway provision was created after. Um, the resident on now Nordic Lane. Yes, I do. Oh, there, actually, you know. Kevin, no, yeah, I wasn't. I, I think you're the only one left. Maybe Kevin. No, Kevin was there. around. Kevin, oh, Kevin yeah. creates me. Yeah. Okay, so um, it is um, complicated. That language is confusing, and um, but there was a different situation where that was coming right off four, and this is creating not coming right off this exactly. side of the sack that is, you know. And yet they're both common shared driveways. And yet they're very different situations and the application of each should be considered differently. But yet it's one term for We're still looked at on a project by project basis, regardless of Well, right, but the language doesn't really treat them as two different things. The language treats them as one thing. And so um, my point with that is that there was eventually what turned into a subdivision off of a off of a shared driveway. Um, someone fought long and hard for that. Um, this isn't a subdivision off of a shared driveway. It's two, two properties sharing a driveway. And, where it, and, and so that's why the regulations are written that um, the shared driveway has to meet setback requirements. And yet, inherently, in this drawing, there, there would be no way to meet that. And that's where the language is flawed. So I just wanted to bring to the attention of the board that 
we ought to work on that at some point, but those are our regs right now. And Tom, can I ask you this? Are the, is the total impervious area smaller, the same, or larger than if two separate drivers had been constructed? It's my understanding it would be less. Less. These are the, the pork chop in, in, in the narrower lot. So in this instance, it's going to be, there's a lot of benefits, aesthetic, and I think, like you said, less coverage. Um, if there was a place for a shared driveway, and it's just a short, very short amount of it that would be shared, but where you can see where the, the house to the left brings it off almost immediately. So it's just going to make a, a less cluttered subdivision, better front yards, more grass. I think it's very unusual that someone actually requests a shared driveway. So, um, I mean, where, where that's the case and it's going to be the, the future property owners will benefit, I think it's a win-win. So I'm wondering if your covenant or if there's other deed language that manages this relationship for future subsequent owners than the ones who are Intending to purchase this? It's going to be their forever home, but if, if they ever were. Well, 100 well, years from yeah, now. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> so the, at the closings, the employers that handle the closings will actually create that easement and it will survive with the land. I, I guess my question is more around maintenance and plowing and like that. Is there is there some kind of. But there, is, there isn't at this point, but there, there But will, you're going to do that. There needs to be, yeah. yes. There would be an agreement where they would each splitting the cost of maintaining and installing that driveway for their own good too, but yet that would be a reasonable condition. Okay. Anyone from the board have any questions? I just have a question. Um, I'm just looking at the easement that you have uh, shaded out here, um, and I understand the building envelope and setbacks, the potential house building envelope for lot three. That's pretty much where the house is going to, has to go. Um, you're just extending the easement five and then it really, then the actual driveway will probably go. Well, or will the driveway, will this driveway tend to over, I mean, I know you're, you're going for the easement at this point, but is the plan to run the driveway just up to the first furthest point that it needs to? Exactly. And not the entire length of the well, easement. Well, I went safe and just drew it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Again, these are the same houses that we presented at, at the last meeting that are real houses where they demonstrate that houses fit there. And, and so when this house actually gets designed, we'll fine tune on how the driveway get, gets into it. So we want to make sure we left it up. But that driveway on lot four is absolutely going to break off early. This, yeah. this, it has no, it's not a deep house. It can't be. The building envelope is pushing it up by the road. So it really will be a single driveway as soon as it passes first house there, it's, it's not shared anymore. Okay. It's a shared entrance, really. How many people have to park here? Um, shall we vote it complete? Yeah, we should accept Sorry. it as complete Sorry. first. So I'll move that. I'll second. All in favor of finding the as complete, say aye. 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 All opposed? Let's have it. All right. Now I'll open up for public comment. Um, they would like to comment on this uh, proposal for shared driveway. Seeing none, I think I'm going to actually close the hearing as opposed to suspend it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we entertain a motion that I'll approve the request. Yes? Uh, I would move that we approve the shared driveway request. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Your eyes have it. Very good. So, thank you, guys. Thank you very much. I'll call you at some point. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
typo. Like, I, I would think that that's oh. something we can probably just okay. correct. Let's do that. Scrivener's error. I, I, would, I, I, would I would guess that that's that. what that is. Yes. So. All right. But thank you for coming. So. I'm surprised you're at this point. You what? I'm surprised you're just one thing. I know we discussed last time about the, the fee and the fee the same. Do we yeah. determine if the town is charging the two fifty, which is the max, or not? On the drug guard. Yes. Um, I think not. We have, uh, but that was one of the changes that we made. Is the is the um, the fee is as established by the select board. So if the fee goes up, we don't have to change it in the ordinance. Right. Okay. That's right. So that's that. Right. So the select board can change it. Okay. The safest way to do it to not have to revisit it. If, yep. You know, you have three years to make. Yeah, and I and I think it's a good idea that we we um, recommend to the select board that it is more than fifty dollars. Okay. So just to make sure I, I heard correctly too that we go on to the town uh, website and for search we go into zoning. To the search bar, put just the word zoning, and you'll get. Um, some other references but the, uh, about zoning, but the first one would be a link to the zoning ordinance. Um, it also, um, that link it gives you the, the ordinance, but it also gives you the zoning map. So that big unruly map that I brought from my wall, you can see that in color. Okay. Um, there's a link to that too. Right. Any members of the public like to comment upon the uh, zone room changes in regard to drug yards? I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting. No. <laughs> um, okay, so um, then I, I, I would make a motion that we. Um, I would move that we accept all of these proposed zoning, zoning ordinance revisions as currently um, proposed um, and um, to move them onto the ballot. So one question, so we discovered a problem, and we don't have this here, but so on page 48, accessory dwelling in this, um, it's not 48, the bedroom that's in here somewhere. Do we Number change? four. Yeah. What's that? Number four. Number four. Number four says only one bedroom is permitted in the accessory dwelling. So, <clears throat> how is that worded in the state rate? So it says you cannot limit the number of bedrooms. Right. And no. Right. But so you've got a square foot limit. So right. How do they choose to use that square foot? Right. That portion, which is Roman nine, of, the, of what I said, it says simply quote a municipality may not limit an accessory dwelling unit to only one bedroom in the quote. So. Well, I'm, I'm, that's what I'm sort of wondering well, about. We, where it's very straightforward, and I don't think it is a huge exercise in language and, and anything else, we could just um, propose to delete number four if right, we yeah. want to do that. And we can add, um, I just want to make a comment that we've got a lot of zoning. We're making for a very long ballot on top of an otherwise very long ballot. Um, it, it's, it should be done. That's not really the planning board. But we already can't, you know, we can't be in conflict with the state law. We did not act in conflict with the state law. It ought to be cleaned up. Um, so. Are you saying? So, so, so it's there, not to overwhelm the voter to, to not do it this year. I'm just suggesting. It's not enforceable as it is because the state law right. trumps it. Right. And we're at least now aware of that, and so we wouldn't try to enforce it. Um, so I'm not sure that I'm. So, for zoning here, it looks like we've got. Um, to, so, so the junkyard, the definition and new section, I think, can be handled in one article. The abutter is another article. And then um, whether or not you can paint. And the cost, I think, is another, is a third. Uh, this by the planning board. Yeah, and so, so that's four. So we've already, we've got four. Do we, do we want to add a fifth? As long as this being, and, and I'm a lawyer, but I don't know the answer to this, as long as the fact that four is not enforceable doesn't somehow invalidate the entire. Uh, 
no. provision, then I'm okay with not addressing it. If it somehow does, then that would be my concern. I would just want to make sure that we're keeping track so that next year it is the first thing that we bring up to change. What? Can you tell me the exact section? Okay. Sure. It is a section of the state law or a section of the, the ordinances. It is um, section 8.1, 3 in parens, small 4 in parens. That's how we do it. 8.1 or 8.1.3.4. Just so I know where it is. And I'll, I'll, um, I can start. Which is currently on, on page 48. Yes, please do. We also have mine, to, mine doesn't cover it. Okay. We also have to just make a comment to renumber the following ones accordingly. Yes. yes. Um, so in the past, we haven't renumbered. If we've, if we've stricken oh. a section, we just, it's just. Oh, just like now deleted as of whatever date. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay. That's I've seen it. Too. The law does that. You see that in statute all the time that you know certain provisions are just gone and you don't know what they are. They're just gone. Well, they often say it often will say. You have to look back in history to see what they. It'll be that you know uh, eliminated or, or whatever. Yeah. On such and such a date, right? So that if you have to go back and compare, right? You you, can, you know when time wise it happened because sometimes that's uh, relevant to enforce someone's rights and determine your. So that's probably a good idea. That way you can actually track the history when the changes were. So those, but could you add the date though that it was? Yes, because if, if so, if you strike something that gets added to the index, it's exactly what was stricken. At least it has been. Um, but you're missing um, the body of the text there. Existed and then put it at the very end. Yeah. The well, you're keeping A and it just says deleted yeah. on whatever. Date. Right. So the index, the index of changes is a historical record of what okay. wasn't changed. Okay. So, so yeah, it doesn't, right it doesn't there. go away. It doesn't disappear. That's the scary thing. You don't need to like go reference your old thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all. No, but that may make what's currently in effect. Well, and then it brings your attention and to the it's... fact that something used to be there that's not, that maybe you're curious about now and want to go see what that is. Mm -hmm. As opposed to if it's just gone and remembered, then you wouldn't think of that. Yeah. Even though it may end up being, it's likely a moot point, but. But it shows you that something that was in effect is, it has been changed, modified. And how, by the way, would someone who noticed that, how would they, where would they go to figure that out? Not that they want to the back, the index. The index. The index. The index. The index. The index. Ah, right, right, right. Thank you. So you Thank make, you. Yes. when you delete it, you make a note saying when it was deleted. Okay. So then you can immediately reference it in the back. Okay. So the information is all still there. Okay. Great. Good. Perfect. I think that's all the business we have to have. Well, okay, so I made a motion, if somebody wanted to second it, that we approve these and move these forwards to the ballot. Second it. All, all in favor, say aye. 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 We'll oppose nay. Thank you all. Yes. Okay, so. Is it necessary? Was that our workshop? Yes, I didn't know whether um, it would be necessary to put those. Yeah, I think it's probably a good idea. Okay. Yeah. I think you yeah. have to. Yeah, but maybe with the link. Yeah, especially with the I just want to. Um, I did read it. Yeah. What might? I have not. So, uh, did everyone else get a copy of it? I emailed it to them. Right, right. So. And by the way, you all got a personal paper copy. I just thought I'd be more expedient and just email it to all of you so that we could know it and digest it more quickly. I'm talking about the email with the attachment about um, a land use, um, some kind of state. 
closing land board. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people out in the Hampton area look like. Well, it looked like they're the ones who are concerned about this and trying to rile the rest of us into action. Um, contact your senator and disagree with what's about to happen is the premise of the letter. Okay. But yeah, they're all from Northampton. All right, so that. So there is, um, I believe it's something a public comment period um, with the state right now um, because that's where it is in the legislative process. So um, if anybody has any thoughts and wants to share them, you know, David Waters is your senator, as they say. And okay. you're more than welcome to weigh in with him about how you feel about it. And, you know, and as much as any resident cares, you know, anybody really is. Um, public comment is about public. So, you know, if you feel passionate about it, then you can spread the news to your neighbors and get other people to chime in too. Okay. I have to say, if, if this is accurate, then it takes a lot of the authority for zoning boards and planning board, planning boards out of the hands of municipalities. Right. Yeah. It's pretty wild. It is wild.